So one thing I hear a lot from people is that they wish they could do, you know, cool projects like I do, um, but they lack some kind of resources, you know, not enough money, not enough time, whatever. And maybe I've been giving the wrong impression that, you know, this stuff is always just happening around me and, uh, you know, I'm just kind of tagging along. But the reality is I am grabbing this stuff by the face and saying it's going to happen regardless of how hard it is. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to take you with me and kind of give you an idea of some of the less glamorous stuff that goes on to make, you know, these projects happen. This is, um, well, you'll see. So anyway, what I'm doing today is clearing a road. Someone's letting me drive across their property and it's very nice of them to let me drive to my property, which is otherwise landlocked. And uh, here's the mess where the road's gonna go. All right, it's been several hours of hacking through this crap to get a pathway through here. And I've gone about 200 yards so far to get into the forest. And there's my truck. This is by far the easiest part of the road. And now we come to the first really major obstacle. Uh, here we go. That's about uh, eight feet down and about 10 feet across from here to over there. And yesterday I dragged this pipe through the forest from my place, which is a mile that way. And I'm gonna put the pipe down in here where the water is and hopefully fill it in with dirt above it. All right, I've got the pipe in there and the water's coming out of it down there. And now I'm just gonna fill in this hole with every piece of junk I can find. The sun's getting low in the sky. I'm gonna leave my truck here. Finish the rest of this tomorrow, hopefully. Oh, and look down here. There's a nice little waterfall. I think I'm gonna go play in it. <sighs> I think this may be one of my new favorite places. All right, on to home. It's a mile that way. I'm running. So I've been here, uh, I don't know, an hour or two today, and I just broke my shovel. So I have to figure out how to put it back together. So in order to fix this stupid thing, I have to get the piece of wood out of here that's in there. But it's stuck in with a rivet that goes right through. However, I managed to snap this end off with the pickaxe. Don't even ask how I did that. Okay, so I had to smash both of them off. Sweet, I just got the piece out of there by taking a, a weight from the weight vest I made, which I happen to have in the truck, sticking it in there and hitting it with an ax, and it came out the other end. So, new handle time. So I'm losing about six inches of the handle there, but man, this is way better than uh, 20 minutes ago when I thought, geez, I really have nothing with which to fix a, a shovel. Like a, like a grinder or even some pliers or anything like that. But uh, this is a perfect example of one of those times when it seems like there's no opportunity. But then uh, I just thought to myself, well, maybe there is something I can do. And I started trying stuff and it turned out brute force, pickaxing, some uh, things apart worked. Oh, what a terrible sentence. Anyway, the point is <laughs> that I got the shovel to work when I didn't think there was anything here that could make it work. So all you people who think that you don't have opportunities, just, just keep an open mind and think about it, and sometimes they're just hidden. Oh, and if that doesn't work, just think to yourself, what would Jamie do?
slowly the gap is shrinking. So several more hours of digging in the rain. And here's what we've got. I don't know how well you can see it from here, but I think I'm ready to try driving over it. So in a couple minutes, I should either be in the water or on the other side. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well. All right. I think it looks all right. I'm going for it. Well, I went for it. There's my tire tracks. And there's my truck on the other side. So it's been about a week since I started this whole road thing and I just got to the difficult part. Ugh, that's where I'm heading next. Two and a half days so far. Uh, I'm about to pack it in for the day. And I've got my water jug and my big knife just in case I run into anything dangerous. And uh, I'm left wondering, as I often do, about people like uh, Dr. Wiley or Dr. Giraud or Dr. Evil, depending on which crowd you run with. How do they always have such cool secret hideouts with these big laboratories and stuff? Like, did they have to, like, drive their old beat-up truck, like, through the forest and, you know, dig a road into some place so they could get there and then spend several years, you know, constructing some mad scientist laboratory so they can build their giant robots? I'm always a little disappointed when, you know, the good guy blows up their whole laboratory or castle or fortress or whatever, because that's a lot of work. Anyway, I'm out of here.